Hi everybody, I'm Byron. I'm here reviewing another episode of Family Ties. Today's episode is called Margin of Air. Uh, Alex wants to buy some stock. He's had a school project and he's done very well picking stocks. Uh, and he, he, he should know better than to do what he's about to do in the episode. Uh, there's, two th there's two big mistakes he's about to make and he really should know better <laughs> than to make them. But, uh, yeah, so, but anyway, the episode doesn't start with that. It starts with a, a, another running gag of Elise trying to build a building. She's building a multi-faith chapel. Uh, I had to restart this episode, not because of what I'm about, because the, the soft video software crashed, I had to restart this episode, but in the original recording, I tried to call it a, a uni-faith chapel, which isn't right. Anyway, uh... Alex is badgering, badgering Steve to pay stocks, to buy stocks, to put up some of his money to buy the stocks. Which, you know what, I would do. I, when I was only a little older than Alex, uh, and much, much younger than Michael J. Fox, but only a little older than Alex, I recommended to my dad that he buy Apple at $60 a share. So, my parents are pretty rich, thanks to me. Uh, they're not that rich, but they put they put some money they put some monies into into the apple and they they made many monies they put some monies and they made many monies. See, this was this was back when the iPad just came out. I don't know if you can remember. People thought the iPad was a bad idea, and the stock sort of went from like three hundred to sixty, and now it's at like I don't know two thousand or something. I don't know. And it's paying dividends now, so it's no longer a gross stock. It's just a. Uh, it's just a regular old chugging along stock, which is great. Those are the ones I actually like. I like to have. Uh, you're not going to make that much money off of them. But speaking of which, let's get back to the episode. They, they make a joke. What I just said might not be too true because they make a joke about at and being a great slow growth, low risk stock, which is funny because it's very much not that. Uh, at least maybe it is at this point again, but for a while it wasn't at and man. Oh man, someone should write a history of AT&T and like just teach it as a college course because it's so crazy what's happened. I mean, that's the entire... Because AT&T itself, remember AT&T was actually bought by Singular and Singular changed the name of Singular to AT&T. So yeah, the AT&T was pretty bad and it got bought itself. You know, it, basi it basically isn't around anymore. It's just what Singular now calls itself. Anyway, I had GT. My grandpa bought me some GTE stock when I was a kid, uh, which is now Verizon. Uh. Anyway, they say no, flat out no, and Alex calls the broker, pretends to be him, and actually steals his money. And that's just pretty dark. That that bit. Uh. Yeah, it's some of the darkest stuff. Somebody died. Nobody was raped. So someone was molested. That was it. Someone was molested. Somebody died. But stealing your dad's money, it, it felt darker than the other two. No. No, it did not. The, the molestation felt the darkest. Yeah, because the guy who was dying, he knew he was dying. He knew he was old. And he was okay with it. He was okay with dying as an old man. Anyway, back to this episode. Jin walks in, blackmails him, they become partners. It's fun. Oh, yes. He, he succeeds for a bit. He does very well for a little bit. So this is the first mistake he makes. Take the original out of the table, out of the offering. And it was 500. It became 3,000 and then 10,000. You should have taken the five hundred out of the three thousand and just put it back. Okay, here's the five hundred dollars. I'm now playing with the house's money. You know, if he loses everything, it's fine. And and now it's all his money. He can sort of not really from a legal, from a strictly uh, platonic moral sense. It's still his dad's money because he used his dad's money to make the money. So it's all still his dad's money since there was no agreement. But anyway, he went from the three thousand to the ten thousand. If it had only been twenty five hundred, probably eight thousand is what he would have. 
which is fine. And Mallory finds out and insults Alex. I don't remember what the insult was. I wish I had written down what the insult was. Oh, well. Uh, earlier on, Alex sort of insults Mallory because Mallory's talking about fashion or boys or something. And Alex goes, it's fascinating. Can we go back to stocks now? Anyway, we go back to the chapel, the running gag of the chapel, and she makes it like Hollywood Squares. And there's a bunch of jokes that only make sense if you know Hollywood Squares because they mention the person's name and where they sit. Because the person would always sit in roughly the same spot. It would sort of change a little bit over time, but it would the person would always sit in the same spot in Hollywood Squares. The celebrity. Anyway, so Alex goes ahead and he puts everything, the moron, into a margin call on some stock, on some risky stock. You idiot. I mean, how could you do that? Um, a margin call. Why well, put everything in a margin call? Uh, not in a margin call, in a margin buy. I forget the terminology. It's been a while since I've done business. Anyway, he loses everything. And now that it was a margin call, his parents actually owe a lot of money to the brokerage. Uh, so, in a lot of ways, this episode kind of builds a straw man against the stock market. Don't do it this way. Anyone who's watching, anyone who's thinking about the stock market, do not do it this way. Diversify. If you make a lot of money in a stock, sell some of it. You know, take a little off the table. Don't take it all off the table because it can go up even more. It's probably going to go up even more. But take a little off the table. Take a little off the table. Every time it goes up, take some out. All right. All right. So anyway, his parents are very mad at him. Very, very mad. Uh, very, very, very mad. Madder at him than they were when he took Uncle Ned to the airport. So mad. As they should be. This was awful. He stole from them, and then he just lost everything. <sighs> anyway. And Alex makes uh, two jokes, which I guess is just part of his personality. Is he likes to make jokes, even when he's done something awful, when something very bad has happened. I guess this is part of his character. And he says, I guess that, he says, uh, I realized what I did was awful. I guess that realization is punishment enough. And his parents, they're so mad. They're not ready for a joke. It's just so mad. And then at the very end, the last bit, they had they cut the treacle. It's called cutting the treacle, uh, where you end on a sentimental moment, and then you make a joke at the very end. And he says, it wasn't so much a sentimental moment as a very, very mad moment. Everyone was so angry. But after he makes this joke, of course, they're going to be very angry again. But the episode ends at the end of this joke. So the joke cuts the treacle, and it says, it's not a great joke. It says, if the stock goes up, I guess we split it 50-50, right? And no, no, don't make that joke. But that's the end of the episode. It ends on a laugh, and there it goes. A good episode. A quality episode. An average episode. This, this would be the best episode of a lot of other shows. But it's just an average episode here. Uh, it focuses on Alex. Uh, the ones that focus on Mallory are also pretty good. Jen and the parents are frequently not that good. But Alex might be the best. But like I said, he's better as... I think I may have mentioned this. He's better as comic relief. So because of that, maybe the Mallory-centered episodes are a little better. Because you get to use Alex as comic relief. But... It's a mediocre episode, especially for an Alex slash Mallory centered episode. Oh, that was this episode. Margin Rivera, go watch Family Time. Great show. Bye!